So something, you know, as a parent, you read this stuff and, you, and it kind of grabs your attention and you think, man, I should be concerned about this stuff. Now, first of all, I just want to disclose to you that I am, I am not a medical professional. I am not a doctor. I am not the person to give you advice on this stuff. I'm just simply covering some news stories, letting you know what I've heard. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm far from, from a doctor, just to be clear, okay? I just went through all that training with YouTube because I've been docked for that. In, in truth, I've never had a vaccine in my not life. I've never even had a needle brought near my body. And for me, that works. I, I rely on, on faith and I, and I rely on, you know, a good immune system. And it's, and it's worked for me. I'm a medical marvel, I guess. But I recognize that that's not, you know, the right choice for everybody. And if you're concerned about this stuff, you know, maybe talk to somebody who's an expert in it, not me. I'm, I'm just telling you what I hear is going on out there. And, and you guys are welcome to add a little bit of information down below on this. But um, something that we've seen popping up all over the world. Now, when last time I talked about this, it, it, the reports were mainly just in China, right? Um, this white lung syndrome. And from my understanding, like I said, I'm not a medical practitioner or anything. From my understanding, this is a bacteria-based pneumonia, uh, white lung syndrome. It is not a pathogenic. Of, of any time. Um, whether or not somebody's playing with some bacteria in a lab somewhere, I don't know. But the point is, is that it's it's a little bit different than, than other outbreaks that we've seen, but it seems to be an outbreak. In fact, here in the United States, um, so we've seen this in the Netherlands, we've seen this in China, we're seeing it in the United States as well. It's already here, right? So in Ohio, it's already reached epidemic levels, which means that there are enough children that have experienced this and gone to the hospital for this to reach the level of what uh, the state of Ohio considers an epidemic. So it's something that we should be aware of, something that we should be mindful of, maybe develop some constructive questions around. I know that the WHO has asked some questions about this and even uh, congressmen have sent a letter to the CDC saying, hey, why aren't we paying closer attention to this? Um, it's also been found in Washington, DC. And I think, let's just see, Western Massachusetts. That's the other place where it's been. So it's a mysterious respiratory illness that has been popping up. And you know, I, I, I like I said, I don't know a whole lot about diseases and that type of stuff. I generally have always had a very strong immune system. Um, when people around me are getting colds and sick and, and things like that, I generally fare pretty well. I don't, I don't really get much of anything. And, you know, it's always been, you know, my faith to kind of stick to the way that I handle things. And I think that that works for some people. Um, maybe not everybody, but it works for some people. And I think that there's a method even behind that. Um, there, there are different, you know, ways, you know, every doctor is going to have a different way of treating these types of things. And, and there are many differences of opinions around it. The big thing that I question is, you know, the, the timing of this thing, you know, it, it, these things always come out with cold and flu season. And generally what ends up happening is, you know, your kid starts coughing and, and you hear about this stuff and immediately you, you become overly concerned whether or not you should be, I don't know, I'm not a medical professional, but um, it's definitely, you know, when these things arise, makes me um, wonder, you know, a little more about, you know, what's going on and, and whether it's not, you know, another situation. I mean, the question has arised, is this another situation? We don't know, nobody's answered that question. And it, the same thing kind of happened you know, back when, when COVID, the COVID respiratory disease broke out, um, the coronaviruses have been around for, for a very long time. But the, the, when COVID broke out, it wasn't that big of a concern when it hit a bunch of pockets in China. And Beijing, this, um, to give you an idea of this pneumonia, it hit 7,000 kids in Beijing alone. So, um, I mean, it's definitely something that seems to be spreading, but it's a bacteria. A lot of questions that I have around it. And like I said, I'm not an expert. I don't know. I just thought I'd bring it up to you guys so we can discuss it. Now I do have, <laughs> here's, here's something I do have for you. And this isn't a cure. To be, cu to be clear, this is not a cure for, for anything. But during cold and flu season, something that we have found effective in our household that we utilize, um, and maybe it's just soothing. I don't, I, I don't know the science behind it. I don't apparently understand science at all because I've never had a needle. But I will say that uh, what we do is we take raw honey from our beehive, 
maybe like two or three tablespoons of raw honey, and we put it into a mug filled with hot water that we steam up in the kettle, and we add about a tablespoon of um, apple cider vinegar to that. And it has to have the apple cider vinegar with the mother because that has some very important properties for your immune system. And then we take about a, a teaspoon, or I do a little more, I do almost, I just squeeze half a lemon in there, but a teaspoon of lemon would work. If you really don't like the, the taste of apple cider vinegar, I'd add some more lemon to it. So it's more of a lemony honey type hot water. It's called a honey toddy and it works really well. I would try and use raw honey, local raw honey if you can. To clarify, when I say work, it doesn't necessarily cure anything, but what it does do, it, it has some properties that are good for your immune system that I, um, you know, that are said to be good for your immune system. And um, it's very soothing and it just, it seems to help, you know, but, and I don't know how that, you know, cause that's for like colds and stuff like that. I don't know how that works at all with this pneumonia thing. It just made me think of you know, something that might be soothing and relaxing if your kid does have a cough uh, and you think it's cold. But yeah, I am not 100% sure what I think about this pneumonia outbreak. And I don't do enough research on pneumonia to know if this is normal, if this is abnormal, but this seems to be going around the world. So you've got it, um, Netherlands, uh, Denmark, Amsterdam has already seen cases skyrocketing. Um, so this isn't just China anymore, it's here in the US. And I think, you know, in times like these, you have to use some wisdom, right? I mean, it, when COVID broke out, there was a lot of confusion. There were a lot of people who thought this was something that came out of a lab. There were some people who thought that this was just a pathogen that was spreading all over the place. And then there were some people who thought it wasn't real at all. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a little bit of wisdom and, and saying, hey, okay, we're going to wash our hands, be smart about things. I also don't think that you need to live in fear either, right? Because fear, I think, has um, compromised a lot of people over the years, right? When, when you're fearful of something, you tend to take drastic steps that you probably wouldn't have taken before, or you, you forget to utilize the faith that you do have. If you're fearful about something and you feel that that has more power over you than, you, than your faith, then your faith is compromised. So I don't think you should be fearful. I think people should be wise. I think we should pay attention to this thing and you know, see where the news stories go. It could go nowhere. This thing could just be one of those things that's around for a week or two and then becomes the next, oh, everybody thought this was going to be another pandemic. It's not gonna be a pandemic, it would be an epidemic. Point is, is that, you know, there are, there's a lot of that, but then that does also doesn't mean that we shouldn't pay attention to it, shouldn't watch it, shouldn't follow the stories just to make sure that there's not stuff that we should just be mindful of. I'm curious, you know, what, what you think of, um, of this. I don't, like I said, I don't know anything about it. I, I really don't. I'm, I'm not a medical professional and I don't, I'm not here to give medical advice when we talk about subjects like this, COVID or anything like that. I'm more or less just sharing with you my thoughts on it. And, and I recognize that my way of handling things may be very unscientific to some people. So, you know, what are your thoughts on, on how you can, you can work with it? Do you have any idea of where this could be going? Is there anything that I'm missing you know, other than the fact that it's no longer just in China, but it's right here. Um, you know, I, if there was somebody the other day who, uh, who's come down with pneumonia. And pneumonia is not even something I ever thought about before. Maybe sometimes these situations make us start paying more attention to this stuff. And, and in that, you know, I think there's a danger in that as well. But, you know, when, when we start seeing things reach epidemic levels and we start seeing reports rising, if anything, you know, we, we need to be mindful of false fear tactics as well. When you become fearful of something, it causes a lot of people to stop doing things the way they would have normally done them. You know, they stop going to the store to get groceries the way that they normally would have. They stop going to work the way that they normally would have. They stop voting the way that they normally would have because they become fearful of exposure um, and, and I'm not necessarily sure that you should go, you know, there's a difference between wisdom and fear when it comes to these things. And I don't, and maybe I'm not explaining it all that well, but I definitely wouldn't, you know, let that 
override you, but I do think we need to pay attention to it.